From DocuSign, this is Developing with DocuSign, Programming Power Forms. I'm Larry Kluger, Lead Developer Evangelist for DocuSign. Embedded signing enables visitors to your web application or web portal to sign documents within the context of your web application. The signer does not need to leave your application to find the signing request in their email. Embedded signing provides a superior, integrated experience for your signers. DocuSign has two developer solutions for embedded signing. You can use either PowerForms or the DocuSign eSignature API. PowerForms are much easier to integrate but provide fewer options. The eSignature API supports many more use cases and includes all of the features available from the DocuSign web app but does require more programming. To help API developers, DocuSign offers SDKs for the languages shown here, plus many code examples and other training. This video focuses on using PowerForms. Other videos in this series cover the DocuSign eSignature API. Adding a PowerForms embedded signing page to your application is straightforward. First, using the DocuSign web tool, create a template. Then, again using the DocuSign web tool, create a PowerForm from the template and record its URL. Step three, your application redirects the user to the PowerForms URL. And four, that's it. I'll show you these steps later on during the demonstration. Depending on your use case, PowerForm URLs can also be sent to signers via email and can be posted as links on websites. Additional options for your PowerForm. Your application can include query parameters with the PowerForms URL to set the signer's name and email, envelope custom fields, metadata, and envelope field values, or tabs. Using query parameters, your application can set values for fields that are read-only for the signer. The signer can be redirected back to your application after they complete the PowerForm. The template and PowerForm can include some types of signer authentication. For example, KBA, knowledge-based authentication, access code, etc. Pro tip, obscuring the PowerForm URL. Obscuring the URL helps prevent people from calling the URL on their own. Examples. A web form can return a redirect to the power form. Or a web form can include data fields. Your server can then check and validate the field values, and if correct, return a redirect to the power form, including the data fields values. By using these techniques, the power form's URL is obscured from the signer. But with a little work, it is always possible for a thief to determine the power form's URL and submit an envelope on their own with their own settings. The solution is to cryptographically sign the URL. Here's a pro tip detecting that the PowerForm was started outside of your application. To authenticate that the PowerForm started with your application, create a signed HMAC, signer, app, date, and etc., and add it as envelope metadata. Since an HMAC signature is cryptographically created with a secret key, only your app can create or validate the signature. PowerForms offer many benefits. No DocuSign eSignature API programming is needed, no integration key is needed, no go live process is needed, and the branding feature can be used to customize the look of the signing ceremony. PowerForms do have limitations. PowerForms are only created from a single template, and the envelope's document set is fixed per PowerForm. It's difficult to programmatically determine the ID of the envelope created by the PowerForm, and remember that PowerForms can be started from outside your application, from their URLs. But, depending on your use case, you may need to guarantee that the PowerForm was started via your application. As I discussed previously, an HMAC can be used to enable validation of the data in the envelope that was set by your application. The PowerForm's URL can also be obscured via a form, but doing so is not a guarantee that your application submitted the PowerForm. By default, the signers ask for their name and email in a separate signer information form when a power form is started. This form can be skipped for some use cases by including the signer's name and email fields in the template. See the documentation link for more information. Now let's see a demo. We'll start in the eSignature admin tool. In the signing and sending section, we've opened the envelope custom field screen. This is the list of metadata fields for your account's envelopes. You can see that I've created three envelope custom fields that we will use with the power form. The office and team fields are list fields with specific value sets. The order ID field is a text field. Now let's move to the DocuSign web tool. We'll open the template list and then we'll edit our demonstration template. This template has one recipient signer role named signer. We can also see the three envelope custom fields. Moving to the tab editor screen, we can see that the templates document has a number of tabs. Here's a summary. There are three system tabs, full name, email, and sign here. There are also five data tabs. 
All of the tabs can be set by the application. The first name tab is read only. It cannot be updated by the signer. The other tabs can be updated by the signer. Back on the DocSign web tool, here's the first name tab and its read only attribute is clicked. We can also see the receipt checkbox is clicked by default. Next, let's create a power form from the template. Here's the resulting power form URL. We'll save it as the first part of a URL on a new incognito browser session. In this series of slides, I'm showing how to control the template settings from the URL. Each item is a query parameter that can be added to the PowerForms URL. Each query parameter name is introduced with an ampersand and set with the equal sign. Spaces, ampersands, and equal signs in both the parameter names and the values must be URL escaped. For example, the escape sequence for a space is percent to zero. First, we combine the signer's role name with username and email to set those values for the specific role. We add the query parameters to the URL as shown. We set the envelope custom field values by prepending envelope field and an underscore to the field's name. Note the encoding of the query parameter name for the order ID envelope custom field since it includes a space character. And we add the query parameters for the envelope custom fields to the URL as shown. Lastly, we're also setting the data field values. For the checkbox fields, we use the value X to check the checkbox, and we use a space character encoded as percent to zero to uncheck the checkbox tab that is checked by default in the template. Here's the complete URL. Now, let's add all of these query parameters to the PowerForm URL and open the page as the signer. Remember that signers do not need a DocuSign login or account. We're using an incognito window to confirm that no account is needed. Here's the power form. All of the fields are filled in as we requested. Note that we can change the values for the fields that are not read-only, but we can't change the first name field since it is a read-only field. The receipt checkbox is unchecked as set by the URL. As the signer, I'll check it now. Now we've signed the form. Back in the DocuSign web tool, we open the power form section and click on the completed power forms link. The envelope display screen shows us that the envelope custom fields were set as requested. That's it. Here are the documentation URLs for PowerForms. I've also included this information in the notes below. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notification bell icon so you'll be notified for our next episode of Developing with DocuSign.